Hey there everybody, it's Wayne D. Welcome to the website, WayneD.com. And as you might expect, it's Francesco Molinari, fellow Italian, who won the British Open. We got some shots here from the championship itself over here on the left and a number of uh, different kind of angles. So it's an interesting uh, swing, and he's also had an interesting career. Uh, he turned pro in 04. He was an uh, excellent amateur. Uh, he ended up on the Ryder Cup team twice, back in uh, 12, 10 and 12, I think. Have Tiger Woods in uh, the final match that year that they, uh, they won by a point. So we're going to look at... Uh, I'm going to look at his swing. It's been very solid over the years. He's won over, if you add up the European and the U.S. tours, he's won well over $30 million, uh, maybe closer to 35 or 40 but uh, right now he's ranked sixth in the world. He was as high as fifth way back when. And he wasn't really doing all that great this year, and then all of a sudden he won the BMW and then he won the Quicken Loans, finished second at the John Deere, finished second in the Italian Open, and then he wins the British Open. So he's had a remarkable couple of months here. All right, so we're going to look at this face-on view. I always, uh, when I see this ball position here, if I draw that line back 90 degrees, it makes me question the camera angle. Because if you look at where, you know, I think most of these guys play the driver up by the heel more. So I think this camera is uh, off to his, uh, toward his left foot, uh, you know, maybe looking at him from over here a little bit. So we'll take that into consideration. Uh, when we look at the swing, obviously the one on the left is an odd angle, but there's some things you can talk about all these different angles. They do have some, some down-the-line angles, but uh, let's look at this face-on view first and see what we got going here. Uh, First thing we notice is sort of a neutral grip, nothing too strong or weak. So you can expect, uh, it, given the wrist position at the top of the swing, if it's flat, the face will be fairly square. If he cupped it a bunch, it will be open, and if he bowed it, it would face would appear to be more, more closed. He doesn't really do any of those things. It's fairly simple. He has a significant amount of uh, of right loading going on here in the back swing. So it looks to me like uh, he's moved his weight to the middle of his right foot here with the foot slightly flared out so that when he starts down, while you see the pelvis move here, you won't see the th right thigh and the right leg move initially. Right here you'll see the the lower part of the right leg stay put and the foot stay fairly grounded but look at all the look at all the motion up there in the in the hips and pelvis so it kind of seems that the more you load on the right side in the transition when he adds flex and you'll see it over here so let's watch great posture I really like the uh, athletic look to that stance. I encourage most people to get their weight forward of center on the feet, arms hanging comfortably. It just looks uh, looks ready to go. And this is a swing that's for, you know, 13, 14 years of solid play. So we can look at this for, and look for some, some uh, things to maybe to copy. One of the interesting things about the swing is in the back swing, if anything, his trigger involves a tiny little bit of lifting. You can see up here the top of his cap just peek over the top line. And we see a lot of players who by now would be under that line. But if you watch Molinari's heel, he's going to lift it or, or allow it to lift for him to stay 
taller up here and more more level in the lower body he's not going to want to he's not going to increase his pelvic tilt right away he's going to keep his left leg up and then so here's the really the, the interesting part of the swing with him he's going to add a little bit of right knee flex he is going to add hip flexion in here on both sides and at the same time he's going to rotate you can see the if you watch the belt line real closely it's hard to see from the front view but when you look at it from this odd angle you can see right away that the left side of his pelvis is, is moving around as soon as he begins to you could say squat or compress into the ground belt buckles moving in but you can see that left leg is moving out of the way as he gains compression so if you look at where his head is getting to the top and then when he starts down there's that there's that lowering that you almost always see and now he's able to push up there's a significant upwardness to that strike so again if you are approaching P6 and you are left enough which he is and you're deep enough which he is and you are rotated enough you can push upward so he's gonna push up off that left leg stays behind the ball beautifully you can see in that transition such a hallmark of good players where you see the lower body initiate stretch the muscles up here not as apparent as a guy like uh, Xander Schofley but uh, uh, Molinari hits it plenty far he's actually interestingly enough if you look at his stats from 2015 to now he's picked up over 20 yards in fact he's picked up just about 15 yards in the last two years so that would be interesting to ask him what what's the deal uh, did he just get a perfect driver or what but he definitely has picked up some distance that's uh, and that's a huge help one of the comments on TV was that he finally uh, learned how to putt. He's always been a, a really good ball striker. His stats are good. So when he putts, um, he's been hot lately. So let's take a look at a couple of different uh, different angles here. So here's one from more more down the line can see that posture he's obviously out toward the balls of his feet grips pointing up at the belt buckle pretty much he's got a very neutral takeaway it's pretty much right up the plane and again no lowering you can even see the left foot up a little bit with an iron shot always has the right amount of forearm rotation up here to plane the club very nicely the right arm is a he's a sort of an arm more of an arm f bender with the elbow back by the side more you can see he's got plenty of forearm angle up here and then he flattens the shaft so it's been a question you know what causes the shaft to flatten um, I would argue that if the hands stay especially quiet and away from the body and we look at the at the at the pelvic movement when you get that pelvis digging back rotating 
and sliding all at the same time. It'll rotate, it'll delay the upper body. And with the right arm searching for space and trying to get in front so that the hands can lead and provide that strike that's necessary for the irons. All of that in itself is going to cause the club to kick back just a bit. It doesn't have to kick back very much because it's pretty much perfectly on plane. This is going to take it maybe a tiny bit flat, but then as most good players do, they'll go from flat to steep. And when it goes from flat to steep and stays above the right forearm, it's going to go left as long as the hands aren't too wide on the approach. So this is that little wedge shot he hit on 18. Just a beautiful little shot. Very simple. If you look at his upper body, if anything, it's normally a, a fraction closed. You can always kind of see his left arm over top of the right. Of course, all these camera angles are, are taken. The British always put the camera behind the golf ball. So this is a good example of that little bit of a trigger that is a tiny lift and then he stays up. Watch the left heel. That thing's going to come up right in the takeaway. So even before he gets to P2, he's going to have his heel off the ground and he's going to let it lift up maybe an inch, inch and a half. And then he's going to start He's going to start rotating. You can see the, the compression and the rotation. As the heel reaches the ground, that club is already kicked flatter. So there's the, watch the, it's pretty faint up here, but you can see the club head moving sideways as opposed to straight up. And what does that mean? That means that the hand path is obviously more out at the ball. That's why I, one of the reasons why I really like this this swing. The left arm is responding to the pivot. It's not trying to pull down. You know, he's not pulling on the club. He's just patient with it. Gets this nice depth in his legs. He does have a little backup. You'll see that in a lot of good players. Not a ton, but just a bit. Very, very nice uh, footwork. Very quiet. Once that left heel goes up, another one of the things I really like about his swing is that you never see really any heaviness trans, uh, transmitted to the front of the left foot. So from up here, when he starts forward, and that left knee gains a little flex as both knees do, he's putting that heel down and there's already rotation. So that heel gets down pretty quick and he doesn't get heavy on the front of that foot, which allows him to open up nicely. You can see the full release of the right hand right here, that right wrist. So he will hold off some of the wedge shots, but for the most part, He's going to full release it. And a couple more swings. So this is a shorter one. Let's watch this one. So there's the there's the hold off wedge. You saw a lot of those coming off that super tight grass where the club face would would stay more this way. So that's just not releasing the right wrist. You can see it here. Yeah, usually for less than full shots. There's 
a full driver swing. There's that little trigger and lift. There's the heel coming up. Now watch the knees flex. Left heel is going to come down. All right, Francesco Molinari, Let's see if he can stay on a roll.